My admission to school was quite an interesting one. Um, as you know, we lived in Brandywell. So uh, age sort of four, I used to go out into the road, into the gates at the back, which I noticed have now got no entry on them, up across the field. And outside the classroom <clears throat> was a old fashioned school bench. So four years old, I was climb up onto the seat, then up onto the desk and look in the window. And apparently the <clears throat> people in there who would have been Russell Bowden, etc., cetera, um, <clears throat> said uh, to whoever the teacher was, John Ayres come and she got a bit fed up with this. And in the end she said, well, he might as well come in. So that was admission to the school, it's 1948. <laughs> so I just went to school then every day. That was a year before you should have done? Oh, a year before I should have done, yes. Um, and um, <clears throat> uh, yes, and Blanche Ayres, no relation but with an S on the end, um, was the infant's teacher. I can't remember much about the curriculum. I remember we were taught to read and write very well, um, and uh, number work and so on. We also had a large dose of religion. Uh, we had to learn the catechism. And although I stand corrected on this, I have a very vague, very vague memory of saying a prayer of Lord, uh, um, Lord bless the squire and his relations and keep us in our proper stations. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. So who was the squire in those days? That was Squire Tanner. Um, and the estate was closely guarded by Keeper Turner. Uh, one didn't venture down to the park in, as a boy in case Keeper Turner uh, caught you. Uh, so you could move quite swiftly and you got your ears boxed, um, so um, <laughs> you, kept away. you kept away. There's quite a little funny story uh, about Blanche, which I remember. <clears throat> I remember I was sitting by Kenny Dew, who now who has farmed in Clumpton. Friday afternoon, uh, half past two or whatever it was, was story time. And so we had to sit on the floor um, facing Blanche who sat on the chair, and she read the story. Now, she didn't sit very elegantly. So for some time, I grew, I, as I progressed in age, I um, th thought that ladies' underwear consist of very long pink bloomers with elastic just above the knee. <laughs> Yes, that was Blanche. I remember you told me about the dentist visit. You yes. told me about the dentist. Oh, gosh, yes, I can see the lady now. Tall, with slightly protruding teeth and with glasses. Uh, oh, he dreaded her visit. Um, because, of course, there was no... It was, she set up her chair in the infant's room. The infant's room moved. Goodness knows where they went. And <clears throat> one was summoned to the dentist chair one after another. But there was no electricity. And I went over a couple of periods, had six flings with this lady pushing a pedal. You can imagine how fast the needle went. And she only stopped, well, she kept going, and it was agony. So it was a pedal operated drill? Pedal operated drill, yes. I mean, it was, it was torture, actually. Um, I mean, now I, I think of it every time I go to the dentist where it's pain free, you know, brilliant. And uh, I mean, it would take her a oh, good half an hour to drill out her only one tooth. I mean, this is a, a child. And no anaesthetic? Oh, no, 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 no injections of any description. Um, so it was all a bit grim. So the school building in those days was quite basic then. You were saying no electricity? Yeah, no electricity, heating with coke stoves, uh, which were in opposite corners. So I guess they shared a, a chimney. It, the great innovation was the kitchen was put on in my time. Can't remember what we did for food before then. Um, <clears throat> um, basic desks and, and so on. Just the two... Uh, 
pretty horrible toilets, no place for the staff to go. And uh, the gardens were tended by us children. Um, I, I certainly knew how to weed gardens and grow a few carrots and so on. I hadn't got a clue about science and physics and the French, but, <laughs> but there you go. But that's what you needed growing up. That's what you need, yes, yes. I mean, looking back, it was an incredibly safe community, you know, an incredibly safe way, place to be educated. Um, I don't remember there being any parents even. I do remember maypole dancing and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, but by and large, it was good. Um, for some reason, quite unknown to me, I managed to pass the 11 plus and went, that meant going to the grammar school. I mean, in those days, the 11 plus was, was an interesting experience. You took part one in the school, which I passed. And then <coughs> you were told you were going to Chumley to take part two. Now, I had been to Chumley. I had never been in the school, and nor had other people who went. It happened that on, it was a February, I think, it snowed. There was no provision to get me to the exam in Chumley, which could, well, was going to change the rest of my life. Uh, so, but, so my father organised Frank Tucker, who had had a, had a Land Rover, to take me in. And I can see us going down now in, in the snow and then disappearing as I got outside and walked across the playground into the hall. I'd never seen a hall that big and I had to sit down and take this exam for two hours. Um, it was quite unbelievable, really. Did you get a lift back again afterwards? I presume I did, yes. I, I, less, I, I mean, there was no provision made for transport, as far as I know. Probably Frank Tucker came and picked me up. Yeah.